So welcome to this tutorial. I've created this tutorial because my other video for drawing a guitar uh, didn't have uh, keystrokes and mouse clicks in it. Um, I was asked to do so, so here we go. Uh, please do keep in mind that all dimensions that I use uh, do not necessarily um, work for your guitar. So please change all dimensions and designs uh, to your likings. Um, this is just to show you how I draw my guitars. So I just hope this is helpful to you. And if you have any comments or questions, please let me know down in the comments. So whenever I start a drawing, I'd like to disable capture design history. Um, I'll show you why I want to do this. So let me create a box to show you. I press OK. I make a small edit on this part. And I press OK again. Uh, so I select this body. And now when I want to delete it, I just press backspace. There you go. Now you get this warning each and every time. This feature is referenced by other features in the timeline. In other words, whenever I make an edit on an other object, and which is in relation to this object, it get, and I press delete, it'll have an effect on all the other objects that I've drawn before. So uh, are you sure you want to delete it? Well, not the, at this point in time. Let's say console. There's a way of getting around it. You need to select the body, press your right button, and then instead of delete, press remove. That way, it'll be gone from your workspace. Here it is. Uh, and it'll be still be in your design history. The only problem I have with that is then when I select this body, each and every time I want to delete it or remove it, I need to go up this menu and select the remove uh, manually. There's no button or shortcut to it. So, um, for me, that's a reason to disable capture design history um, completely. It'll give you this warning, this timeline and all design history will be removed and further operations will not be captured in the timeline. I'm fine with that. Just press continue. So now I can leave this body and start my drawing. So I'll start by drawing a scale length first. I uh, press the letter L. I use this plane. Um, I zoom out a bit. And this is my zero. So this is the point where my terminal part will be. So I press it. I, I make sure I'm horizontally. Um, and I press 635, press enter. And now what I do, I make this a construction line by selecting the line that I just draw and press uh, letter X. And now it is a construction line, as you can see in the sketch palette, which basically means it's just a reference line. It's not really a visible line, if you like, but it's something that keeps you uh, uh, on track while drawing this guitar. So press finish sketch. And now I've got my scale length. So before I continue, I'll change the name of this um, sketch uh, and I'll name it scale length. So there you go. Um, now I'll show you something that I do a lot. I'll make a construction plane on each important position. Um, to draw the neck, I need a construction plane at the zero fret position and at uh, the 12th fret position. Uh, I do that by using constructs, choose asset plane, choose my reference point, which is at zero position, and type in the scale length. And immediately you'll see here a asset plane at the zero fret position. Press enter. And I also need a second one. So I choose asset plane, use my reference point, type in scale length, divide by two, which is the 12th fret position, and press enter. So now I've got my construction planes over here and I can start drawing my neck shape. So I'll start by drawing the zero fret position. I press the letter L, choose my offset plane. I'll zoom in a bit. And the first width will be 43 millimeters. 
I'll start by drawing the half of it, so my scale length will always be in the center of my neck while drawing. Um, so now I will draw the left side of it, a complete width. There you go. I'll move this up so it's out of my way. And now I will draw a height line for the neck at that position. 14 millimeters, and I'll create a construction line of it, so it won't bother me when I create love later on. So I'll draw a spline from here to that position. Press OK. And now you can adjust the shape of the neck. So you can make it as wider or smaller if you like. And when you're happy with this, um, okay, so then I press finish. Right, so if I zoom out, you can see I've drawn the shape of the neck at the start of the neck. Um, now what I do, I will draw this the 12th fret position. So I press the letter L, select my offset plane, zoom in a bit, and this will be a bit wider. It will be 49 millimeters at this position. Again, do half of it, then draw the complete width of the neck, 49 millimeters. I'll move this out of the way. Then I draw a height line, and this height line will be 19, exactly spot on. And then I'll create a construction line again. So now I take a spline, move it from here to here, and then adjust the shape of the neck accordingly to whatever you think suits um, the other shape. Right, then press finish, zoom out again, and there you have it, two shapes. And now I can create um, the first physical form. I can create a loft. So I press create, I press loft, and uh, you see this, this point here is already selected. That's not the correct point, so I'll delete it. And then I will select these two shapes. So this is the first shape that I select, and this is the second shape, and it will create a loft. And as you can see, this is a nice round, start of the neck so it looks good zoom out press ok so now what i'd like to do is to extend my neck from this point on to the 24th fret position so what i do i'll make an offset plane i select my reference point type in my scale length and divide it by four so you get the exact 24th fret position but I need to add an extra five millimeters to this to hold the uh, fret on the fretboard. So I press OK. And now I can extend this part. So what I need to do is not use extrude. If I use extrude, the extrude will be straight. So this shape, as you can see here, it's also uh, it's divided. The neck is divided in two. And also this part of the extrude is straight. Uh, in regards to this part of the neck, which is tapered. So don't use extrude, press console, uh, but use asset plane instead. So then we press the letter Q, and I select my asset plane. And if you look sideways, you can see that it actually stops at this very position where this offset plane is. So press OK, and go back to home. And now you've got your whole uh, neck drawn up until the 24th fret position plus a bit extra for holding the uh, 24th fret. So now I will make the neck joint block. Um, I'll do that by making an asset plane again from this point on like 100 millimeters. Just hit enter. And I'm going to split the neck. So do modify split body. Select this body and as a tool it says here, extend splitting tool uh, to make sure that it goes all the way through when you're splitting. So select your splitting tool. I'll select this offset plane. And this way the body will be split in two parts. Just hit OK. And now I'm going to extrude this part downwards. So hit E. Type in 43 millimeters, which is the, uh, the thickness of my body. Uh, you see it go up. So to go down, just um, add a, a minus in front of it. Um, and then I'll go down an extra three millimeters. Um, why three? Because um, the neck 
um, holds the fretboard, and the fretboard is like uh, five millimeters. Um, add another one millimeter for uh, the frets themselves, so that would be like six millimeters. Add these three, and you get to nine millimeters, and the string height will be at ten because of the tremolo at this very position. So don't do a cut operation. Um, I'll make it a new body um, because then I can shape the neck joint. So hit OK. And that's that. So before I start drawing the shape of the neck joint, um, I'm going to delete this part because I don't need it anymore. And this is the neck itself. I'll, I'll call it neck for now. And this will be our neck joint. So to draw the shape of the neck joint, I need to draw at the bottom half of this. So I'll press L for line, and then I'll select my sketch plane by selecting the bottom half. Um, and now I need to find the uh, center of this block. So I'll slide down this edge, and you'll see a triangle pop up. That is the center. So then I go down, create that line, create a spline for the shape. Um, I'm, I'm going exactly to the center of my scale length, but you could do any shape. Um, let's do this, hit OK. Maybe adjust it a bit because of the curve that I don't like. Um, I don't know. Maybe something like this. And hit Finish Sketch. Right, so now we need to create a loft from this part and connect it um, to the other part, which is over here. So I'm going to create a loft. And there's a point already selected here. Just delete it. I'm going to select this profile. Select the next profile. And now it's connected. And I need to create a nice shape to it. So let's hit curvature. And... Um, Maybe adjust it a bit to make it more smooth. Let's say three, just hit OK. And now you have a nice curve on your neck. Uh, now we need to create the neck uh, block itself. So we're going to split this block with the back side of the curve. So let's make it visible, hit modify, split body. I'm going to select this block then I select my splitting tool, which is at the back side of this curve. And make sure extend splitting tool um, is selected. Um, then make it visible again and hit OK. And now you can see there's a line running through this block. It's been split completely. So this is the part that we need. And this is, th this is the part that we don't need. So we can delete that part that way and now you can see we have this nice curve this is a good moment to join these together so select both um, hit combine you see both are uh, selected hit OK and this is your neck still we need to make a connection to the body and um, we do that by because this is a screw on neck we need to uh, split this body so I'm doing a offset plane hit the bottom side, I'll go up like 23 millimeters. And that way, if you look at it from um, at front, you can see we still have room over here, which, you know, gives a nice um, um, shape to the neck itself, it's not too high, it'll fit in the stock that I'll use later on. And we have this shape for the uh, body part. So hit OK. And now we're going to split the body. So hit split body, select the body. Well, that's this one. And hit the splitting tool, which is the asset plane that we've just created. Again, um, select it, hit OK. And now what we are left with is this part, uh, which is the neck joint. Call it neck joint as well, joint. And we have our neck over here. So this part is now done. So now to create the fretboard, um, I'm going to make a nice curve on these, this side of the 
and neck. So I'm going to select these ribs. And I'm going to hit F for fillet. And they're going to be round of like six millimeters. Right. So now I'm going to select this the top of the neck and I'm going to extrude it five millimeters. That is the maximum height of the fretboard. Um, don't do the join operation, but make it a new body because it's going to be a fretboard. Um, hit OK, and there's your fretboards. Let's call it that way. Fretboard. Right. And a, my fretboard has, an, has a curve to it. So I need to draw a cir circle on this side and then split this body. So I'm going to do uh, create sketch. I'm going to draw on this side. And then I'm going to create a circle, a two point circle. I'm going to find the center. And I'm going down, let's say, uh, 400 millimeters. Right. Um, finish sketch. And now we're going to split the fret body. So I'm going to hide these two. And I'm going to hit modify split body. Select my body. Select my splitting tool. And as you can see, it's all the way through. So hit OK. And as you can see now, this is what's being uh, split. So I'm going to remove that part as well. And now you have this nice round curve to your fretboard. So if we look at it um, from um, this position, we have the neck uh, and we have the neck joint, which makes a nice combination from here on. Instead of having one radius for your fretboard, you could also make it a compound radius. So you have a different radius at the beginning than you have at the end. And the way you do that is you create your regular fretboard of five millimeters, make it a new body, hit OK. And now we're going to create a sketch on this side and at the end. So I'm going to hit Create, zoom in on this side, and I'm going to make a two point circle from the center of the fretboard, and we make this 400. Hit Finish Sketch. And now we're going to draw um, at the other side of the neck. So hit Create Sketch. Select this plane to draw on. Create a second two-point circle. And we make that 600. Hit Finish Sketch. There you go. And now we are going to create a loft. So we're going to create a loft. We're going to check this one and at one at the other side. That one. And we're not going to make it a cut operation, but we're going to make it a new body operation, which will create the new fretboard. So hit OK. And now if I hide this one, you can see that we've made a compound radius fretboard. So we can do this one. And that's how you make a compound radius. All dimensions are just examples. Before I start drawing the headstock, I need to extend the neck just a bit to hold the top nut. So I'm going to select this shape. And I, when I'm going to extend it, um, this part will be straight and that will be tapered. And I don't want that. I want it to be in line with the rest that I've made. So I'm going to hit Q instead, offset face, and I'm going to extend this for five millimeters. This is the space where the top nut is going to be. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I need to decide on what kind of headstock I, I like. And I'd like to make a 10 degree headstock. So I'm going to use constructs and use a construction plane at an angle. So I'm going to use this line as a reference point and um, I'm going to type in 10 degrees. There you go. And this will be um, this and the construction plane that I'll be drawing on for the headstock. So I'm going to hit L and I'm going to select this offset plane, right? I'm going to start from the center. Um, well, uh, let's say we're 38 out or so. 
and I'm going to make sure that I'll be passing this line for the uh, last string. So whenever I uh, hold my mouse on this point for just a few seconds and I go down, it'll give me a reference line, as you can see, when I go down. So that's nice. I go down, down, go down, and I'll make it about 20 or so. Um, let's see, 20, there you go. And I'm going to be a bit more off like that. Like that, and I'm going to give it some shape. Just like that. And I'm going to shape it a bit more just for fun. That's okay. I'm going to shape this one as well. Just a bit. Right, and with the letter T for trim, I can delete these lines that I don't want and hit escape and hit move for moving these points just a bit. And maybe that point as well. Just like that, right? So now it's time to draw the holes for the tuners as well. So I'm, I'm going to draw a line, a construction line, and I'm, I'm going to make it square with the, uh, this line over here. So like that. And I'm going to make it a construction line. So. I need to be of like 15 millimeters or so, 40 millimeters. Um, and now I can draw a reference line for drawing the holes. So this line must be square as well. There you go. And again, this is a construction line. So press letter X. And I'm going to draw the first circle for the tuner, and which will be around let's say here, which is 9.8 millimeters. There you go. And maybe I'll move it down just a bit like that. Right. Um, I need a few of those holes. So I'm going to create a rectangular pattern. I'll select the first object. I'll select the direction as well, which is this construction line. And there will be six of those over a distance of six times 24 millimeters. And as you can see, the holes will be within the headstock. So I'm going to press enter. So now we have these the holes created and now we need to make a fillet between these two lines. And let's create it, let's say 47 or so. Hit enter. And now we need to make this an extrude. So finish sketch, select this drawing, hit extrude, and we need to go down for this body, let's say 50 millimeters. Why 15? Well, we need to go past this line over here. So this one is deeper than that line. So hit OK. And now we can combine these two. So I'm going to hide the fretboard and the neck joint, and I'm going to combine these two. So let's hit Q for offset face. Just go in there. Um, we're fine. Hit OK. Then we're going to combine these two, and I'm going to split the whole body with this face. So let's hit Combine. There you go. This body and that body. Hit OK. And now I'm going to split the whole body with this as this face make sure this extend splitting tools switched on hit OK and now if you have a good look you can see that there's still room for uh, the top nuts so if I delete this there you go there you have this smooth transition but now we only need to do is make this a smooth transition as well so hit F for fillet select that line and now pull it outwards just to make sure that you have a nice transition like so and then hit OK. Right, 
So now we have a nice headstock for our guitar neck. If you think that the positions of the holes for the tuners is incorrect, instead of completely rebuilding the headstock, you could also move all the holes at once. Um, let me show you how. And you can select inside of the holes by pressing uh, and holding shift and selecting them all. Let's zoom out. And then unhide the sketch that you were in so you can see the reference line on which to move. And then you press the letter M for move and then you can start moving the holes around like so and then press OK. That way you don't have to rebuild the whole headstock. If you'd like to have your tuner holes in line with the strings coming from the top nut you can easily do so by drawing some construction lines. Draw your construction lines on a horizontal plane. Press the letter L for line, choose your horizontal plane, and then draw one or two millimeters out and straight down. Make it a construction line by pressing X and do it also on the other side. Press the letter X. Right. So now you've got two construction lines. I'll move these out of the way. Hit finish sketch. And now you can start moving the tuner holes. Select the insides of the tuner holes. And also on the side. So that can move along while you move the tuner holes. Make the sketch visible. Press the letter M for move. And now you can start moving the holes. You can see the two lines over here. Uh, please be sure that the holes are um, on one side of the lines. So this uh, hole should be on this side of this line and this hole should be on this side of this line. So they're pretty good now. We just need to turn them a bit, like so. And they're pretty good this way. And now your tuners are in line with the strings coming down from the top nut. For drawing the truss rod, um, I need to hide this fretboard and I'll start drawing a rectangle on the top of the neck. So I'll choose my offset or my sketch plane and um, I'll start drawing from my fret zero position, three millimeters up and 440 millimeters wide, so three millimeters up. And then I go to the other corner and draw a rectangle from here, six millimeters down. So let's say six millimeters and 440 backwards. There you go. Now I'll hide the rest, just not to get confused. And I'll use the T for trim to remove the center line. So now it's just one big square. Um, I'll need to make a, a, a nice smooth corner on this side to hold the uh, truss rod. So I'll use a circle and trim the rest of the lines that I don't, do not need. So there you go. This can be gone. So this is nice and round. And then I go to the very start. There you go. And, and this bit is wider. So the nut is a bit wider than the rest of the truss rod because it's seven in diameter and 25 millimeters uh, wide. So I'll use uh, a line. I'll draw this line up. I'll choose seven divided by two, which gives me a starting point. I'll draw a rectangle, um, seven wide. Uh, seven width and then 25 millimeters long. There you go. And again, I'll remove the lines that I do not need with the trim tool. So there you go. So basically this is the rough shape of the truss rod. So 
you need to make it uh, onto the uh, neck itself and we do that by choosing this uh, square using extrude and we'll go down nine and a half millimeters we say cut it's okay and then automatically this disappears so we use to the sketch again I'll ch take the second uh, square and we go down seven millimeters to hold the truss rod nut and now if we have a look and I'll switch up the sketch then you can see we have the, 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 the nut in place or the truss rod in place as well as the nut so this is nice and square now we need to make a hole to get access to the nut I'll select this part over here I'll press the E for extrude and I'll just drag it outside until we're totally clear it's uncut I say OK and there you have it this is your complete truss rod with your fretboard on top right so it's time for the screws to be drawn in um, and I start by drawing on the other side first I need to hide the fretboard and we want to have a look at the bottom side of things um, mainly this area over here so I'll start by pressing the letter L I'll use my sketch plane and, and the first thing that I'll do is I'll create a construction line so we're 10 out I'll make it a construction line I can hide the scale length now and I can go up 15 millimeters to stay away from the truss rod so this is a construction line as well and I'll draw the first hole for the first screw which is a six millimeter screw or just a bit less but um, uh, on the guitar it'll be a six millimeter hole so there you go and I also make space for the head of the screw uh, which is around 11 millimeters right so I'll do that on the other side as well so we go 15 down I'll make it a construction line I'll draw a circle which is six millimeters I draw another circle for the head of the screw which is 11 so there you go right so let me hide these for a moment I choose these circles I'll copy them I copy them by selecting copy and control V then we start moving them to the side this way and press OK so now we need to uh, make an extrude so I'm going to start with the inner circles hold shift to choose the other ones as well and there you go press the E for extrude and then we go all the way through by selecting the top side there you go press OK right so now what we need to do is the, uh, do the outer rings so these get selected by holding shift as well again press E for extrude and then we go down uh, 8 millimeters so we go down 8 millimeters and then we have space for the head of the screws so press OK that's OK now we need to do the top side because we need something to uh, screw into right so we do another sketch on this side and we use the center points from the other sketch and then I create a polygon inscribe polygon select the center and we say it's 5.7 in diameter right and I'll do this four times inscribe polygon create the center I could copy paste this but this is a bit more fiddly so I think this is quicker 5.7 right so now I'll select these um, these inner spaces by holding shift there you go and we press X root again and we'll go down six millimeters into the material there you go press OK and there you have it oh, spaces for holding the screws 
um, for the neck and onto the guitar body. So by doing that, all major work on your neck is done and we can start working on the guitar body. To create the guitar body, um, I'm going to draw on something which we call a canvas. Um, we need two things in this um, drawing. It's the scale length and I'm using a canvas. And this canvas you can find under insert and press canvas. What it does, it projects a picture onto your sketch plane. And you could use that as a guide for the shape of your guitar body. So let me press canvas. Uh, it asks for a face on which you draw onto. So I use this plane and I choose my image. There you go. And now it's really, really small, but you need to fit that onto your scale length. So I'll take a view from the top and then start scaling it. And what you need to make sure is that this point, so that's your uh, your start position from your scale length up until your fret zero position, uh, fits onto the scale length. I need to make it as center as possible, so your shape of the guitar body is lined up correctly. Right, this is just a rough shape, just to give you some guidance. So when you're done, press OK, and your canvas is ready. So now you can start drawing on the sketch. So create sketch, select your plane, and start moving with a spline. And I make sure that I hit the um, fretboard uh, so I know it makes a close contact to that so you get a close shape later on. Try to use as little points as you can to make the shape more uh, smooth. So I only try to make points at uh, positions where I think that the curve is changing. So now it's time to move all these handles um, and try to correct the shape um, to the um, example that you have in your canvas. Um, I try to use these handles and place them horizontally or vertically as much as possible to create the most smooth shape as I can. Right, so I think this rough shape is pretty okay. Um, uh, I'll hide these and I'll hide the canvas as well. You can see this 
weird fiddly bit, but that won't be a problem for later on. To create a body from this design, uh, we need to extrude it. So keep in mind that we need to work to a thickness of 43 millimeters. So select the top face, hit extrude, and then we can um, point at this position, the, the bottom of the neck joint, and then it'll create a thickness of minus 46. So we need to subtract three millimeters later on. So obviously don't make it a cut operation, but do make it a new body. Hit OK. There you go. But now we still need to subtract those three millimeters. So hide those other ones, uh, select the top face, hit extrude, type in minus three as a cut operation, which is OK. Hit enter and there you go. So now when I unhide these, you can see we have enough space between the um, fretboard and the body. And this roughly gives uh, shape to our guitar. Now we can combine the neck joint and the body together and therefore we need to hide the neck and the fretboard and we're going to use the neck joint as a tool. So uh, I'll select the top face, I'll press extrude 100 millimeters and we'll do this symmetrically so it eats away on both sides. And now I'll hide the neck joint and that way it won't uh, um, delete the neck joint. So now I'll press OK and we're still left with these two guys over here. We're going to delete those, press backspace and we're going to unhide the neck joint and there you have it. And this is nearly done. We only need to combine these two together now. So I'm going to modify, combine, select my target body and my tool body and press OK. And this is now one guitar body with a neck joint and a fretboard and a neck. One thing I found out while actually machining my other guitar body was that the uh, pocket for the neck was too tight on the guitar body. Uh, so the neck had the same dimensions as the pocket for the neck joint and that was actually too tight. So I needed to widen it up a bit. So what did I do? I'll show you. Uh, I'll hide the neck and fretboard. And what I did was actually I chose these sides and that one as well and press offset face and I'll make it just a half millimeter wider to all sides. And that actually gives you uh, a bit more uh, room between the neck and the guitar body, but it's just enough to keep it nice and tight um, all the way through. So that way uh, your neck fits your guitar body perfectly. It's time to draw the pickups and I'll start drawing on the top of the guitar body over here. So let me create a sketch. Use the top face of the guitar. There you go. And I need the scale length to determine where to place my pickups. So uh, I choose a rectangle, a center rectangle, so I can uh, start from the center of uh, the scale length. There you go. And then the width will be 22 by 87. And I need another rectangle. Same points, there you go, which is 40 wide and 71 in height. Right, so let me hide these for a moment. There you go, and I'm going to delete all lines that I do not need. So, And because my machine is using a six millimeter round bit, I need to uh, fill it all the outside corners. So I use fill it. And my drill bit is six millimeters. There you go. 
and I need to do that to all the outside corners. Right, so there you have it. Um, if you get confused by seeing all these markers over here, those are constraints and you can just easily uh, let them disappear by uh, clicking this button over here, show constraints. And uh, so this is much more clear. So um, I have two humbuckers, so I need to place two of these. So I do copy, paste, and then move it to the side and just about here and now if we have a look we can see where they are at and I'd like to move this one just a bit to the left or to the right like five millimeters instead of ten there you go all right so now we need to uh, create the holes for the pickups and they go down 15 millimeters um, they go up nine millimeters in total height are 21 millimeters I'll have one or two millimeters clearance uh, to the strings. So I'll just push extrude. I'll go down 15 millimeters. And if you look from the side, you can see how much that is and just press OK. The recipe for drawing a tremolo hole is basically the same as I did before. Um, we only need to take into account that the start of the, of the scale length is not exactly the center of your tremolo. That totally depends on which tremolo you have. Uh, I have a, a Wilkinson tremolo and that might be different uh, of yours. So um, I'll start by creating a sketch on top of the guitar. There you go. And I'll hide these three bodies to make it easier. Right, so this is the start of my scale length. Um, first, I'll be drawing the two holes um, that hold the pins for the tremolo. I'll make it a construction line. That's a first hole, and I need to make a second one. Again, a construction line. Right. So these are the two holes for uh, the pins of the tremolo. Now I need to draw the hole for the tremolo itself. And that is on the other side. So first I need to take a distance from the scale length to find the center of my tremolo. And then I need to find the center of the hole that I need to create. So first I need to step to the left three and a half millimeters I'll add another 11 to find the center of that hole there you go it's a construction line and now I'll make a rectangle which in width is 22 and in height will be 72 there you go I need to make some extra space on the bottom side to hold the handle of the tremolo There you go. And now I need to delete these lines over here. There you go. And since we're working on a CNC machine with a drill bit of six millimeters, uh, I need to f f uh, make these inner corners round. I do that by making a fillet of six and the other one as well.
Right. So let me hide those uh, constraints and dimensions. And then you can see that the holes are still clear of the pickups. Um, the only thing that we need to create now is that they are uh, not actually on the body yet. So we need uh, the extrude function to create it. So I'll press finish sketch. And I'm going to extrude this bit. And it will be totally through. Okay. There you have it. And the other two holes, these two holes, need to go down 22. Extrude and go down 22. And also cut operation and press OK. So now if I had, if I had the sketch and zoom out, you will see that we have done the front of the guitar with the tremolo hole. If you'd like to move the holes for the pickups uh, because you feel that the tremolo is uh, too close, uh, you can do so by selecting all these square uh, over here. And then press the letter M. And now if you move uh, this arrow, there you go, it'll completely move uh, the pickup. So let's say you want to move five millimeters and then you press OK. And now you have more clearance between the hole for the tremolo and the pickup itself. This is a good moment to add curves to the guitar body. I'll be using these curves later on also for creating covers um, for the electronics and the tremolo hole. Before I start creating the curves, I'll, I'll hide the fretboard and the neck and I'll be focusing on the guitar body solely. To create these curves, I'll be making a plane uh, on top of the guitar and then pull down the sides and I also do that for the bottom side. So go to form then I'm going to create a plane and I'm going to select the face on which I'm going to draw onto. And now I'm going to create the, um, the plane from the center of the guitar body. And I'm going to hit OK. Now to create the curves on the sides, I need to select these edges and then pull them down. So I'm going to modify edit form and then here you can select what you want to select from uh, the shape so now I can select the faces but I want to select the edges only so I'm going to select edge I'm going to hold down shift as well to select these four edges and I'm going to have a look from the side of things and I'm going to pull this down you can make it like that, but that's too big for my taste. So I'll like it like 10 millimeters down and then hit OK. I want this shape to be as close to the edge of the guitar body as possible. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to press the letter M for move. And I'm going to zoom in and then just drag it up. Hit OK and zoom out. I also want this curve on the other side. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to copy and paste it. And now I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees by pulling this handle. I'm going to move it down. There you go. And again, I want to be as close uh, to the edge of the guitar body as possible. So I'm going to zoom in and drag it down. You see, this is too much. And this is just good. Then hit OK. And now you have made two tools for slicing this guitar body. So go back to solid, hit modify, select split body, select the guitar body, select your tool, and this as a tool, hit OK, do it once more, 
select split body, choose the guitar body, select your tool, which is this body, and select OK. Now I hide the things that I don't need, so that's this split body, that body, and these two planes, and there you have it. This is your curved guitar body shape. It will look like this now. Now that this shape is done, you can select these four bodies that are hidden and you can delete them. So now I'm going to create the comfort zone on the back of the guitar. And that's basically the same procedure as before. I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to position this and um, I'm going to slice the body. So I'm going to form, I'm going to hit create, plane, and I'm going to use this as a plane to draw onto. I'll be looking at the top, but rather at the back side. And I'm going to select the center of my plane, right about here. I'm going to make it big enough to eat a chunk out of my guitar body. There you go. I'm going to hit OK. Now it's time to create this curve. So I'm going to hit Modify, Edit Form, select my edges. Hit Shift also for selecting multiple edges. And I'll be pulling this down quite a bit, like so. Hit OK, and now it's time to move this plane into position. I'll hit the letter M for move, and I can adjust the way it looks. I'll maybe even slide it to the left a bit. There you go. OK, hit OK. And then I'm going back to solid. I'm going to hit modify, split body, select the guitar body, select my tool. And there you have it. Press OK. And then I'm going to hide whichever I don't need. So I won't be needing this one and this one. And this is what it looks like. And I'm going to delete everything I don't need. There you go. To create the hull for the tremolo, uh, I need to draw on the back side, and therefore I'll start with making an offset plane. Uh, from this very plane, I'll go down 50 millimeters. There you go. And I'll be drawing a rectangle on this side. So press the letter R, select this face. There you go. And we're going to need the uh, dimensions of this drawing. So I'll show that one and I'll hide the neck and the fretboard and all that. So I'll start this drawing. Uh, I'll make it 115 to that side and 18 height. We need some extra space on the back of this tremolo hole to create room for the tremolo to move. So let's create another uh, five millimeters on this side. There you go, and I'm going to leave the lines that I don't need. There you go. And now I'm going to make round corners. Six over here, and six over here. Hit enter. Right, so this is the main outline. And now I'm going to let it grow to make room for the tremolo cover. So I'm going to use offset, uh, let's say five millimeters to the outside, hit OK. All right, and now we need to create the cover first. So I'm going to hit finish, and uh, I'm going to use the offset face function to create this on the guitar body. So let's unhide the, the guitar body and uh, I'm going to project these lines onto the guitar body. And we're going to use asset face. We're gonna then it follows the shape of the guitar body. So use split face. 
select the splitting tool, which is this outer line. And as you can see, it's projected onto the body. Uh, make sure it's close point and then hit OK. I'm going to select this part. I'm going to use asset face. We're going up three millimeters, the thickness of our uh, cover and hit OK. And because we have this hole, I'm going to use uh, a previous drawing that I made, which is the space for the treble hole on the front. I'm going to select that one. I'm going to use extrude 100 millimeters upwards, hit new body, say OK. And we're going to use this to fill in the gap that we have at the front. So here it is. Now I'm going to use split body a lot. There you go. Um, I'm going to say split body and I'm going to cut it with the top of the guitar over here. There you go. And I still need to do the same to uh, the body that we made from uh, the tremolo hole at the front. So I'm going to use split body. I'm going to use the same top side. There you go. And now all we need to do is to cut this piece. So I'm going to select it, say split body. I'm going, going to select the top of the cover. There you go. And that's that. Now we've got our cover. So I'm going to delete this part. This part will we will keep. This part will keep as well. And this part can go as well. There you go. So now we have these two bodies, which we can combine into one cover by using combine. Operation is join, hit OK. And this is our cover. Now then what we need to do to make it fit uh, when it's machined, we need to make it a tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to select all sides. We're going to hit shift to use the other one. All right. This one and that one. And we're going to hit Q. And we're going to let it um, shrink just a bit with minus 0.5. Hit OK. And then if we want to fit it into our guitar, uh, we can because it's slightly smaller than the hole uh, on the guitar body. Now I'm going to create the um, actual space for the guitar cover. Uh, and now I need to reproject and the lines that I've just drawn. Um, so I'm going to show these lines again. I'm going to split face. I'm going to select these outer lines again. There you go. Hit OK. I'm going to hide those sketches. I'm going to select it and pull it down three millimeters. There you go. So we now have the actual space for the cover. And to create this space for the springs, um, um, I'm going to recall my sketch again. I'm going to select the inner um, uh, sketch, hit extrude, and then so select the top of my guitar body. So this would be my virtual zero. I'm going to add another 50 millimeters to that. So uh, we have space enough for the springs. So this bit here now is flat bit, uh, which makes the machining a bit quicker. And here's my cover to cover it up. Uh, but as you can see, it's still uh, above my guitar body. I can lower that by using move and just move it down, not 10 millimeters, but three millimeters. And then you have a perfect fit. If you think that your tremolo needs some extra room to move, um, what you could do is make this bit a, a bit lower. So add an extra 15 or even 20 millimeters uh, to create some extra space. Now I'm going to draw the hole for the electronics on the back side of the guitar. So I'm gonna hit L and I'm gonna choose the sketch plane on the back side. Let me turn the body around like so. And now I'm going to draw the rough shape of the electronics hole. Mm 
Now I'm going to let it grow just to hold the electronic cover. So now it's drawn on the inside. If you want it on the outside, hit flip and then select OK. So now I'm going to uh, create the electronic cover by projecting the outer line onto the guitar body and splitting the body. So hit finish sketch, modify, split face, then select my tool, the outer line, and hit OK. So now I'm going to select that part, make an offset face so it keeps the shape of the guitar body. It goes up three millimeters, but now it's still connected onto the guitar body. So I'm going to split the body and disconnect it uh, from that body by selecting the top of the guitar body and hit OK. And now we have this new part, which is over here, which is the electronic cover. So I'm going to call this ELEC cover. Now I need to make the three millimeters down for holding this cover. So I'm again, I'm going to use split face. I'm going to select my tool and my two is in this sketch, which is this line. Hit OK. Um, now I'm hitting offset face again minus three and there you go so we now have this electronic cover and we have our body this is still too tight so i'm going to shrink it just a little by selecting all sides hit q for offset face type minus 0.5 there you go and now if we have a good look with your guitar body you can see it's just a tiny bit smaller i need to lower it a bit so this is my electronic cover use m for move and where it's going down three millimeters so that way it says five but i need three and now it's flush inside my guitar body And now what I need to do is to create a hole for the electronics. So again, I need my sketch. I'm going to use split body, this body, and I'm going to select my splitting tool, which is the inner line. And it's going to cut all the way through. There you go. And now there I've got two bodies, body 35, which is my guitar body. And I've got the inner part let me hide everything else and now what I need to do is to copy this piece to make the thin wall on the front side of the guitar so I'm selecting this one using copy and paste and I want to move it up just three millimeters three there you go and I'm going to su subtract these two so I'm going to use combine and this is my target body and my tool body will be that one it's not a join operation but a cut operation and what you're left with is the thin wall for the front of the guitar body so hit ok and now if i show the guitar body again you can see that it's still there and still flush with the guitar body i'm going to co combine this part with that part say join hit OK and now it's not visible any longer right so now we've got this electronics hole the only thing that we need to do now is to create the holes for the um, knobs that we want so I'm going to draw on uh, the inside of my electronics parts so let's say here the hole will be eight millimeters I'm going to make two or three of those And now we need to select the inside of these circles. And as you can see, I can't select them because they are probably on the other side. Hit extrude 
and just let them go all the way through. Okay. So this is it. Now to give everything a nice round shape, I like to um, uh, give everything a fillet. So I press the letter F and press this contour and make it seven millimeters or so. Also, I do that on the back side. So I press the letter F, choose this edge, type in seven, uh, press enter again for this part, press the letter F and make it seven. And also for this part, I make it seven millimeters there you go and i now i have this round shape of the guitar body let me show the neck and the fretboard as well and there you have it a whole electric guitar i hope this was helpful to you um this is just to show you how i draw my guitars i'm sure your dimensions will differ from mine and also you will have better designs uh, than i have um, but this is just to show you and help you uh, on your way to draw guitars in Fusion 360. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Um, uh, thank you for watching.